Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a fold and twist, I think it was. I actually made this, I think now, maybe two years ago, and um, I'd done one for a magazine commission, and I thought let's do another one for the channel. So this is a new size. I've used one of my bouncy kind of envelopes, but this will fit into my 6x6 box envelopes, and I'll link them up here if you would rather do that. So what this is, is a really fun card fold. You can see there how it works. And then this is just a little bookmark. The reason I've done this is because you could put a gift card on here. So you've got a pocket here and you've also got a pocket on the front. So I am gonna cut a white piece here and I think that's where I will write my message. But you could write your message on one of these. You could put some white card on the back there, for example. It's entirely up to you or on the very back. So the whole thing folds and will fit into a six by six envelope pop that in like so which you just saw so I just took it out of there and uh, yeah it's very very easy to make so let me show you how. Okay so I've used the Dubcraft Paper Posies this is the 6x6 pad for the papers and I used the 12x12 pad for the envelope which I'll show you to make at the end. For the Hello I've used these ones here which are really good. These are the typewriter dies by Tonic Studios and then for the flower I've used the John next door and this is the Christmas rose and it's this plate here. For the centre of the flowers I've used the brick road, yellow brick road sorry, and that's the Nouveau Vintage Drops and then for the gift tag I've used the Hunky Dory Tag Maker. Again I will link as much of that as I can in the description box below. So to make the card blank you want a piece of 7 by 10 and first of all what you want to do is score, I'm going to grab my metal ruler and stylus and you want to score from the bottom left up to the top right okay you want to make sure you get point to point you want a really nice uh, score line there that goes right through and your ruler should just reach I know the one I done before which I'll link if I haven't already I did have to extend it a little bit so that one is slightly bigger so do check that one out okay so I've just scored right across there and then you want to come in from the top left you want to come in two and a half inches just put a little mark or a dent there with your stylus and then you want to come in from the bottom right corner again two and a half inches and put a little mark there. I did come down wrong, I come down to three for some reason but that will get covered with my mats and layers in a minute anyway. And then you want to score to join those two as well like so. Okay and then with the main big score line you're going to create a mountain fold and then if I just turn it around, you can see you've got these two kind of mountain peaks. And you want your score line to hit perfectly at the bottom of those. And you want this one to lay over the top. Okay. And then when you fold it in half, it's following that score line, the whole thing will come together and form your card blank. Now you will need to use your bone folder and you'll need to kind of flatten out the card because it's going to be quite bulky around this corner here because it is folding well there's four layers in total but you'll have it like that and it will have a bit of a spring to it you're just going to get that but once it sits in the envelope and it's kind of nice because it automatically goes to open to stand up but that is what you'll have now I think I'm actually going to fold mine that way so that that um, extra score line is hidden inside and then I can hide that with my mats and my layers like so so you've got a pocket at the front and then you've got a pocket inside so now we need to do our mats and layers so First of all, I'm going to use the holographic card for my mat and then this pattern paper. So I've already done one here. This is what I'm going to show you how to make and that's going to go in the back one like so and you'll have a nice border around it. So you'll need two pieces that are five and three quarters by five and a half. And you want to make sure that you've got it so that the five and three quarters is running along the bottom. And you're going to come in along the top just under two inches. So in between one and seven eighths and two, just put a little marker. And then you're going to come down one and three eighths. And again, put a little marker. And you'll just see if I hold it up. I've just got a little dent there and there. What we're going to do is we're going to cut across to there. And then we're going to cut down from that one down to this point here. I'm just going to bring my trimmer in, just line up those two markers along the blade. And then that point down to this point. 
keep all of those, they're handy little scraps. But now, so we'll stick that one in there. This one is going to go on the front one there. You can see again, we've got that border. And then for the pattern layer, I've got this piece here. I picked up the wrong one. So this is a piece of your want to that is five and a quarter by five and one eighth. Okay. So I have the five and a quarter along the bottom here, five and one eighth here. You want to come down one and a quarter and just put a little pencil mark. And then you want to come in from that top left one and seven eighths. Okay, so again, you'll see there, just got my pencil marks, and I'm going to trim it exactly the same way. You'll have two of these. And I've just taken off any of the pencil mark there, and you'll see now that sits perfectly within that mirrored piece. So I'm just going to use my runner tape here. I would use, you know, this kind of tape or a... Um, a red liner tape, you want something that's strong. I wouldn't use a liquid glue, it would just end up lifting because this is a non-porous surface. So I'm just going to stick that one over the top and you'll do that on that other piece as well, like so. So now that one can go, in fact I'll probably have that one inside, that one on the front, that one inside. Okay, so we'll stick them down in a minute. Then I've got these for the front. So I've already cut these in half, but it's, it's very easy. So you can see there what I've done. So this was a piece of five and a half by three and seven eighths. And I've just cut from the top left down to the bottom right. And you'll have one for the front triangle there. And then this one is gonna go in there and it's gonna cover up where I scored. And then to layer on top of that, you can see like so. Again, if this is a directional, you will probably need to do this twice because this is a stripe, it doesn't matter when I flip it. But if it's something that you're going to flip and it's already directional, it's going to be upside down. So just take that into account with this piece, otherwise you'll just have to cut two. But this is five by three and a half. And again, I've just cut from the top left down to the bottom right. And that one is going to go on that one and on that one there. So I'm going to go and get those all stuck down. You might find it easier to open it up and then stick that one in there and then, you know, put it all back together that way. Okay, so I've just let that all dry and I've also just cut and stuck a white one in there so I can just stamp a little sentiment there and then write my message. You can also seal the pocket. If you don't want to use it as a pocket, you could put glue in there and actually seal that shut. So I'll probably do that with the, with the front ones and then this little bookmark, which is what I'm using it for, will stay in that side pocket there. But again, like I said, you can put gift cards and stuff, but yeah, I think I might just, in fact, let's do that now. I'm just gonna pop glue just on this one here just so you can see how it's done. And you can do it on both. You know, you, you can put glue on that one and just seal the whole thing up. Obviously you don't get any of your lovely decoration caught up in that. Right, whilst that's drying, I'm gonna just decorate this. So this was my tag. You can make this yourself if you don't have the tag punch. This is a piece of two and a half by five and a half, okay? Again, put a you know white piece of cardstock there if you want to have that for your message. I might put a little sticker on there or something as well, but it's there for that person that's going to go inside. So that's that, and then I finished it with a flower at the top, and then I've got, there's another one there, I think I've done that one shorter. It's the same width, because with that tag punch you can do it any length you want, so there's a slightly shorter one there. And then here are my little letters, which spell out hello, so they're going to run H E. The E does look a little bit like the C, but I promise you it is the um, E. And then the O at the bottom there. So that's how they're going to go. Stick the first, stick the centre one down first, and then work out. And that way you'll keep them evenly spaced. And then I've got my and my hot glue's warmed up. I've got one of the flowers so that's going to go right at the top there. I've used vellum as well for some of the leaves. I think it looks really, for some of the petals, I think it looks really nice. And then I've just die cut these ones here. I'm just going to feed these under. Obviously be careful how far out you have them because you want it to fit in your envelope. Okay, I've just realised I put the white on the back there, but it doesn't matter. You've got, you know, 
all that space to be able to write your message and then that one will go inside like that. I think they look really really cute, I love them. So now to make the envelope, so I'm using the envelope punch ball and it's a 6x6 six six card so on here it's got 6x6 six six, so it's telling me I need a piece of 9.5 by 9.5 paper which I've already cut here. My first score line and punch is at 4 and 3 quarters so I'm just going to grab my stylus there so pop it in line it up with the four and three quarters punch and score and I always like to then work against the opposite side so four and three quarters punch and score and then you're just lining up I always say it but if you want to see how to make an envelope using this board in more detail I will share that video but now we have our envelope Use the box envelope if you would prefer, but the bouncy envelopes are perfect as well. So let's look at the direction, let's have it that way. So I'm just going to run some red tape. This is the bottom, like so. And then I want to sit my card in here. Hopefully everything pop it slightly angled as well but everything's in there it's not going nowhere so I can bring this over to the height of the card so that's why I call it a bouncy envelope because you're creating the space that's needed and then just take the backing off and just bring up the sides take the card back out pop it upside down and run your hand in there just to make sure it's really stuck down but now you've got that slight spring bounce to the envelope and then everything will fit in there perfectly like so and then I'll just finish it with a little bit more tape along the top okay so there is my finished twist and fold cards I love them really do think they're just so pretty and you got that nice little gift there and then you have a lovely card that stands up really well so it's perfect for gift cards or just sending some friend mail you might have like some little um goodies that you want to pop in here like some a sequin mix and some ephemeras or die cuts and things like that you can pop them all in there as well and obviously on that front one but uh, yeah there you have it I really am pleased with these i think they look lovely so as always thank you for watching i will link up that twist twist and fold card here as well and I'll also put up maybe I've got another twisted gatefold card that's quite similar in terms of angles so I'll link that one and if you haven't subscribed if you just click on my face and then hit the notification bell you'll be subscribed so you'll be able to see when I next post a video so thanks for watching and I'll be back again very soon bye